Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it's Jinzo here. It's my pleasure to be your host, as always, and for the next couple of minutes, we'll be talking about a topic which is hopefully of interest to all of you, and that is on Dota vs. League. First and foremost, I would like to say that there are a lot of videos on this topic already, and this begs the question of what is the motive for this one if such videos already exist. But of course, that's where I come in, and please allow me to explain. I'm going to try to say this by being as diplomatic as possible. The vast majority of League vs Dota videos are made by League players who have had a very terse experience in Dota. In other words, they haven't played the game enough to understand the nuances of the game, and the conclusions that these players come to is the popular stance in League, and that is because of Dota's high complexity, it therefore makes the game less enjoyable, which is, of course, in my opinion, completely untrue. And in League's defense, I am not just a Dota fanboy, I've actually spent a lot of money on League and played the game quite a lot, enjoyed it with my friends, and still play it even today. However, the typical stance of Dota players is that all League players are scrubs because League is an oversimplified game of Dota and it takes away from the core MOBA experience, which is also completely untrue in my opinion. So now, with this out of the way, let us begin to talk about and dissect each individual part of the argument and to talk about League vs Dota hopefully in a meaningful way so we can come to some useful conclusions about the two games. The first argument that we'll begin to talk about is game popularity. Game popularity makes for a very poor argument because what you're basically accepting is that the more people play a game, the better it must be. And this is a very common argument and, in my opinion, a very poor one. League of Legends was released earlier compared to Dota 2 and had the first mover advantage and also has much lower system requirements, which means that more players are likely to play the game. But if you were to accept this argument, then you'd also be accepting that Pokemon Go is the best game in the world and the Toyota Corolla is also the best car in the world. Now moving on to point number two is the pub and professional meta. Now this is very important because we're dealing with the game dynamics and also the balance of the game itself, how well balanced each individual champion and hero are and how viable they are in the professional scene. Now if you look at the Dota pub scene slash professional scene, they're actually very similar in a lot of ways and I'm not just talking about the scene right now in 2016 but also in previous years. So with that in mind, we can talk about the Dota laning meta, which is very flexible at the moment. For example, there's the 113 tri-lane in pubs, which is very popular, or the 311, the aggressive tri-lane, 212, the safer option in pubs, 122 if you happen to have a wisp on your team, 112 with a jungler, 111 with two roamers, 112 with a single roamer, and the list goes on. Unfortunately, League of Legends pale in comparison to this and only has one viable lane choice, and that is one champion in the top lane, one champion in mid, two in bottom lane, and one champion in jungle. And you cannot deviate from this, and this has been the meta for a very long time, which means that the League meta is a lot more static and predictable than Dota. And this is reflected in the 2016 LCS picks and the 2016 TI6 International. If you have a look at the statistics, in the current meta, 53% of champions were picked in the LCS, whereas 91% of heroes were picked in TI6. And if these statistics aren't enough for you, if you look at hero builds slash champion builds as well, champions in League of Legends almost always get the same build. There may be some tiny variation in build order, but generally speaking, the concept of the hero does not change, the build order does not deviate very much based on what champions you're playing against, and actually item choices don't affect the game as much as it does in Dota. Whereas in Dota, we know that item choice is almost infinite on any given hero, and you must build due to the kind of situation you're in and what kind of heroes you're playing against, giving a huge amount of variety in the game, making the games completely unpredictable. So with this in mind, it is difficult for me to favour League in terms of meta, in terms of hero balance, in terms of game diversity, and in terms of hero depth. With that out of the way, we move on to number three, which is to do with toxicity and pub MMR slash ELO. Due to the competitive nature of both games, it's hard to recommend either community. However, if I had to pick one, and I won't be able to give a sound argument on this due to the time restriction of this video, the League community is generally, on average, much nicer than the Dota one, as sometimes you may come across a few League players who are very forgiving, who are very nice people. However, on Dota, that is not the case. It's very rare that you'll meet somebody who is forgiving, very rare that you'll meet somebody who is pleasant to talk to. Of course, that is not to say that Dota players are horrible people. I'm sure we're all nice people in real life, 
However, given the current MMR slash ELO system that is employed in Dota and League, embedded into the game is the spirit of mobile gaming, which forces the best of us to say some questionable things over the internet. Which brings us to the second part, which is the pub MMR slash ELO system. The Dota MMR system is very simple, and it's so simple, in fact, that you couldn't get simpler than this. In every game you win, you get 25 MMR. In every game you lose, you lose 25 MMR. And that's it. So, generally speaking, if you're good, you're going to get high MMR. If you're bad, you're going to lose MMR. Unfortunately, this doesn't account for win streaks, it doesn't account for losing streaks. So, if you bought your account and you bought a very high MMR account, which is around 5k, you're going to be ruining a lot of games before you go down to the MMR you rightfully deserve. And the same is true the opposite way as well. Not only that, but Dota MMR is not reset ever. So if you don't play the game, you keep your MMR, which is okay, except that there are a lot of account buyers and account sellers that will sell you a very high MMR account for a very low price, which ruins a lot of high skill level games, which is unfortunate. And it doesn't look like Dota is going to be cracking down on this anytime soon. Which brings us next to League's ELO slash League system. Now the League system in League of Legends is actually somewhat interesting. It's split up into seven tiers, starting from Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, Master and Challenger. And each tier is split up into five divisions. So a Bronze tier is split up into Bronze 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1 being the highest division. If you win enough games in the Bronze 1 division, then you're promoted to the Silver 5 tier. And the same is true for all of the other tiers except for when you get to Diamond. When you get to Diamond 1 and have 100 LP, which is the highest you can have in any given tier, and win your promotion games, then you'll be promoted to Master. And then when you get enough points in Master, you'll then become Challenger. Challenger is the highest rank, similar to the Dota leaderboards where you have only 200 players in that leaderboard for each continent. And of course, I've just made it sound very easy to get into the Master tier. It's in fact very, very hard. A Master tier player is sort of equivalent to a 6k-ish Dota player. So of course, he's very good at the game. The final thing I want to point out about the League ELO system is that before a game starts, in ranked games, you're able to select which role you prefer. So you can queue a ranked game specifically for mid, meaning that if you get mid, nobody is going to argue with you over who is going to have mid, which happens very often in Dota games as we're all familiar with. So with that in mind, League has a far superior rank system, a far superior queuing system where we don't have to fight over each other for roles like it's going to be the end of the world. And with that in mind, it's very easy to conclude that the League of Legends rank system is far, far superior to Dota's current implementation. With that out of the way, I'll be talking about point number four, which is possibly the most controversial statement I'll be making in the entire video, and that is on the game's complexity and also player punishment for dying. As pointed out earlier, it is of the popular opinion that League of Legends is a simpler game and also less punishing than Dota, its counterpart. However, I'm going to argue against this case and say that it is untrue in a lot of cases. The simplest example is the buyback mechanic available in Dota. For example, if you go into a team fight and end up losing it, you can still redeem yourself by buying back and defending your base. However, if you do make a mistake in League of Legends and you lose a team fight late game, the game is immediately over. As in League of Legends, if there are no enemy champions defending their turrets and inhibitors, you can immediately end the game before the enemy champions respawn, and there is no second chance on that. You cannot buy back, the game is over. Another big misconception is that we seem to believe that Dota players are punished more for dying. And upon first impression, it may seem to be true as Dota heroes lose more gold upon death. The respawn timer is much longer for Dota heroes and there is no diminishing returns for the same hero dying over and over again. However, even though the death penalty itself is harsher on Dota players, death in League puts enemy champions far ahead further than they would do in Dota. And the reasoning is very simple. It's due to a mechanic called power spiking in League of Legends. Power spiking doesn't exist in Dota because Dota heroes get stronger linearly without ever decaying in strength over time, 
Whereas in League of Legends, a lot of champions get stronger, sorry, no, all champions get stronger exponentially. And when they hit this exponential curve, this is called power spiking. So when you feed that enemy champion a few kills, they will be able to power spike a lot earlier than your allied champions will be able to, which means they will have a specific item or an ability which will allow them to deal tremendous amounts of damage for that time frame of the game that you're in. This means that they will likely be able to kill your allied champions in a split second. So for example, if you had an ADC, which is the carry role, who is caught out of position by a Z, which is a mid champion, and he all-ins you, you'll die instantaneously. There is absolutely nothing you can do about that. So to conclude, my point is very simple. It's that even though individual players are punished more for death in Dota, your team is punished more in League of Legends for when you die. So even though you don't feel like you're being punished because you don't lose gold, your death time is less, your team is being punished a lot more in League of Legends for when you die because it puts the enemy champions further ahead when you allow them to hit that power spike much earlier on. However, after hitting that power spike, the exponential growth starts to decay and there is diminishing returns on how strong a champion can get, whereas it's the opposite on Dota. Dota heroes will continue to grow in strength linearly. So later on, if you've been doing well the entire game, you'll be rewarded with a much stronger hero overall because building that final butterfly or building the final satanic will aid your hero a lot. Whereas in League of Legends, finishing that 6th item, 5th item will not give you the same amount of bonus stats due to their diminishing nature. And of course, there is a lot more to be discussed on the difficulty and complexity of the two games and also its player punishment mechanics. However, there isn't enough time to go through all of the details, but my main point really is to say that it's not so clear cut as to which game is more punishing, which game has the more complexity on the basic level. Both have its difficulties and then very similar but different in many ways, but that doesn't mean that they're both equally complex and equally difficult, because this is where now I go on to point number five where I talk about the physics of the game itself, and that's the nuances of the game, how the top tier players are affected by the physics, and also how the game feels as a whole to your average player, and this is of uttermost importance in my opinion. But what do I actually mean when I say physics? I just mean things like spell animation, or you'd call this casting point or cast point in Dota, projectile speed, projectile disjointability, individual turn ratios, attack animations for different heroes and champions, and of course exploiting the fog of war and the ability to juke. One of the misconceptions about the basic physics of the game is that by removing a lot of these features, it allows for a more elegant gameplay as it removes the quote outdated mechanics of Dota 1. However, I'm going to argue against this. By inheriting the legacy mechanics from Dota 1 gives Dota 2 another level of depth into the game. Keep in mind that I say depth and not complexity. As Albert Einstein once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And I believe that this is the trap that League of Legends falls into. For example, by removing the ability to juke through the fog of war, removing the option to cancel spell animations halfway through reduces the degree of freedom offered to the player substantially which means you lose a lot of realism in League of Legends and that is not a good thing because you've oversimplified something that did not need to be removed in the first place. And so what we have in the end is a game, League of Legends, that is very different from the original Dota, which is fine because that's what they were setting out to achieve anyway. And as we know, Dota is very similar to the original game and keeping on its legacy. However, a lot of people still think that Dota and League of Legends require very similar skill sets such that if you're good at Dota, you'll be good at League and vice versa. And this is only partially true. And this is going to be a very controversial statement as I believe the skill set required in League of Legends is all about instinctive play. So instinctive in fact you have to be able to predict them before they even happen. And the reasoning is very simple, it's that because of the removal of projectile speeds, projectile destroying ability, spell animation, you need to be able to predict everything before they're about to happen. For example, there are summoner spells in the game, as we know. If an enemy champion is about to all-in you with a flash ignite combo, you need to be aware of this happening before he even does it. And of course in Dota, there are examples that I could think of which are very similar to that. For example, a blink ravage combo with Tidehunter, 
but the level of instinctive play I'm talking about on League of Legends here is almost sort of like Counter-Strike because when somebody is good at Counter-Strike the instinctive element to the game is not the same as the instinctive element to Dota. With that in mind if you can master the instinctive nature of League of Legends and also fix your positioning as of course that is of uttermost importance in League of Legends along with learning how to trade in lane you'll definitely become a top tier League of Legends player. However, those skills aren't necessarily as important in Dota as Dota is all about the creative players being able to outmaneuver the enemy when it comes to body blocking and exploiting the fog of war juking which is on another level when comparing to League of Legends. And of course guys, this is just all my opinion and it's going to be biased in one way or another. And really what is the most important here is not my opinion on the matter but rather which game you personally enjoy more because ultimately that's what matters the most. So finally guys, I hope you found this video interesting and hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, throw a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. And thank you very much for watching. It was my pleasure to be your host for today. My name is Jinzo and I'll see you next time.